Today, we're upgrading the drip irrigation system on the Better Terra Garden. Let's take a moment and just talk about drip irrigation basics. And it's just that, it's pretty basic. It's fairly easy. There's a lot of different options, but those options uh, do a lot of the same things and for the most part are fairly cheap. So if you want to experiment with one thing and it doesn't work and you want to try another, you might only have spent $5 on those two components. So let's start with the planning of drip irrigation. Before you order any stuff, uh, before you make any plans, and certainly before you buy anything. First step that I do. I take a blank diagram of my garden. And this is a layup, a layout of the raised beds. The tomato bed and the finger beds. And I pair that with my garden plan for the year. I've got where my tomatoes are going to go, okra, where the peppers are going to go, generally where everything is going to go. Now, here at the Better Terra Garden, we've had drip irrigation installed now for two years, and it has worked phenomenally. It allows us uh, better control over watering. Got a little bit of a wind and lawnmowers going, so I apologize if there's any background noise, um, but we're gonna keep going. So what we've essentially had um, from two years ago to now in the garden is every section of the garden has got four pieces of drip tape. And this is what drip tape is here. I have an example. So it's flat. Um, it expands whenever pressure comes into it. And there's an emitter every uh, 12 inches. And these emitters on this drip tape emit uh, half a gallon per hour. So four of those drip tapes in every single uh, bed and it waters for about 25 or 30 minutes. Uh, depending on how dry it is, I change the time on the duration. And like I've said, it worked really good. But um, looking at how I've planted things for the past two years, there are many sections that get the same plants. I always plant tomatoes and okra in the back bed. This bed generally is always getting peppers. So those are plants that I can, instead of watering along a drip tape every foot, where the tomatoes are spaced out two feet, there's an emitter that's placing water where there's no plant. And that's not necessarily bad, but that is a chance to conserve some water. So this year, I'm going to use a drip stake. This one emits a uh, half a gallon per hour. A piece of microtubing connects to it and it delivers water uh, from this side. And you just stake this right next to the plant. So you get water right where the plant needs it, right at its base. So my plan is to remove drip tape from um, the section of the garden that gets tomatoes and okra every single year. Uh, we don't need drip tape there, except for along the very front edge, as I normally put onions in there. And those are spaced in a way that they can benefit from a drip tape every 12 inches. And then every tomato and every okra will get a drip stake. Let's see if I can sit where the wind is to my back. Every pepper plant will receive a drip stake. However, in the finger beds, I'm going to leave the drip tape. 
And something I did when I installed the drip tape, and we'll get into how the drip tape is uh, fed off of your main water supply in a second, but so I, I added to every piece of drip tape a shutoff valve. So I'm able to isolate each individual drip tape. So if there was nothing planted there, I was able to turn that drip tape off or on depending. So for instance, in the pepper bed, maybe I won't always have peppers there. So I'm leaving the drip tape, just gonna turn it off. And where the new upgrade is going in, I'll add a different kind of on off where I can isolate the drip, uh, the drip stakes. So step one, come up with a plan, draw it out, uh, game it a little bit. And then based on that plan, make yourself a list of the things that you'll, uh, that you'll need to order. So what are those things? Let's start, let's start at the house and work our way to the plant. So the first thing that you need to start with, and this is optional, but I see this as a necessity. This is a timer that will support four zones. So this is where the water comes in. I have a, a Y connector, one going to the timer and one going to my regular uh, hand watering hose. So water in, set the timer, uh, water per zone. The whole garden right now is set up as one zone. So for the past two years I've had this, I've only used one single zone off of it. Uh, it's worked fine. This year uh, I plan on using a second and a third zone, one for watering things inside the greenhouse and one for watering plants on the deck in the patio. So the timer, optional, but almost necessary. This is what gives you the freedom to travel away from your garden and not have to worry about it getting watered. Is a friend helping you out? Do they know, you know, not to spray the whole plant and just water the soil? This takes a lot of the headache out. So this uh, timer, uh, is right directly off the spigot. The next item, and it's connected here, is this piece. This is called a backflow preventer. And what it, it prevents is backflow. So um, fertilizers and stuff from the garden, it doesn't allow it to go back into your house water supply. And that's pretty important. Um, you might also see it listed as a, uh, as a vacuum break. So that goes um, next. That'll go uh, here off of the, we'll go ahead and build it. That'll go here off of one of the zones of the, uh, of the timer. Oh, I lost a seal. There we go. Put the seal back in there. And this piece here is a filter. This filters down to uh, one or two microns, I think. And this just makes sure that uh, something in your water supply doesn't make it down into um, your irrigation system and plug up an emitter. And this, this one has a, uh, a backflow so you can clean it. And that goes on next, right here after the backflow preventer. So I remove all of this stuff, all of these components off from the house. I put it here in this milk crate and put it in the garage for the winter time to prevent it from freezing and breaking these, these parts. So the next item, we'll set this down, that comes in the loop is this piece. This is a pressure regulator. So this steps your pressure down from your, whatever your house pressure is, or mainline pressure, uh, I'm reducing down to 20, uh, 20 PSI. So that's the next item. It goes on here after your filter. 
I know we're looking like we've got a lot of things here. Okay, backflow, filter, pressure regulator. And then I have this, this. This is where the magic happens. This is the next piece that goes on here. After the pressure regulator, we'll just finger tight it on there. It has a big arrow on it that says flow this way. So water goes down this black tube and into this reservoir here where we put liquid fertilizer. It goes inside, mixes, and goes out the clear tube and then into the supply of water headed to the garden. This is a three quarter gallon um, fertilizer and I have it set to slow, as slow as it'll go. So I fertilize with every single watering and it, it's very, very small. It's something like two thirds of a tablespoon per gallon of water. So it's a light fertilizing, every single watering. Last year we saw phenomenal results. You can uh, turn this up uh, to do a heavy feeding if you need to. But I, I found that on a low, slow feeding, this whole thing lasts about 10 to 12 days uh, once I put a liquid fertilizer in it. Fertilizes everything in the garden with every single water. It's great. So now we've built from the house, backflow preventer, filter, pressure regulator, <clears throat> fertilizer injector. And then this connects to the main line. This is just an example of main line. Headed to the garden. Let me move this down here out of the way. <clears throat> so with the main line, I have main line buried from the uh, corner of the house here, underground, over to the garden. Um, and this is a three quarter inch main line. They have half inch main line also. Um, I went with three quarter inch. I just wanted uh, more volume of flow in case I wanted to run multiple zones or expand. Um, three quarter inch has been fine. A half inch might work for your application. So from the house to the garden. So then we get to the garden with main line, three quarter inch main line. It's somewhat flexible, but if you bend it, it will kink. So if you're gonna go around a, a, a large radius corner, it's fine, but if you need to do a 90 degree, then uh, there's all kinds of connectors that you can get for this uh, size of tubing. So in your planning factor, you put your main line around your garden where you're going to add ugh, drip tape. A junction to do more main line. Some sort of shutoff valve to isolate a section of the garden. You can step down to micro tubing. This is quarter inch tubing. You um, have a couple of tools for poking holes uh, into the main line and then using connectors to add uh, your micro tubing. And then this the micro tubing would go to something like one of your emitter stakes or an emitter button. Lots of options. You can also put emitters right directly uh, into the main line. On this end, I already have some holes poked. So you just take your button, I've already punctured some holes, and you add the emitter right to the main line. Uh, this is a bigger hole that's made with this tool, and that's where this uh, drip tape connection fits into. And that click, that means it's, uh, it's sealed up. So in our garden, main line runs right now. Pre-upgraded system. In our garden, the main line currently runs. It enters, 
it enters the back of the long bed, comes across, it tees and splits and goes down the front of all the finger beds. And then drip tape, four of them connect off the main line and go down each section of the garden. So what we're gonna do with the upgrade is right here where the main line uh, crosses the back and right now it's four drip tapes coming off of each. We're gonna leave in one drip tape in the front where the onions are. We're gonna put in this fancy T connection and run main line down each side of the back and then wind, add micro tubing and the emitter stake directly at the plants. And then add main line going to the length of each of the finger beds and then again micro tubing off to the individual plants. So in this bed where there's four drip tapes, we will turn off all the drip tapes, um, turn on to this new main line and have the emitter stakes uh, watering individual plants. So the next year, if we put something else in that bed, we can turn off the main line and use just the drip tape um, if that's what we need at that time. So we're upgrading, but we're also kind of diversifying um, what we can do in the garden. More items that can go into your planning is the needs of the plant. I use a half gallon emitter um, for everything in the garden and then I just um, set the timer for how much time I want that to water for volume. If you have something that uh, needs much heavier water, the emitters come in half gallon all the way up to several gallons per hour of watering. With the different types of emitters, emitter buttons, emitter stakes. This one's a little emitter sprinkler. It's, it sends out a, a fan of streams, 100, uh, 360 degrees around it. I'm going to experiment with using this in the middle of uh, potted plants so it can water the whole the whole potted plant. This is uh, kind of an experiment. I only got 10 of these. If it doesn't work, I think it costs $6 for 10 of them. Um, so these are examples of different emitters. They have ones that mist, they have ones that spray upward, that spray downward, that spray 90 degrees, the 180 degrees. The options are, are nearly limitless. You can plan where you need tees, where you need shutoffs, where you need crosses, there's elbows, and at the end of your main line connection, you can add a cap that ends it. You can take this off to flush it. Um, you don't even need these caps. You can just bend it over and zip tie it, and that also uh, <laughs> that also caps the end of it. Um, I like a, something a little bit more elegant, um, but that's just me. Um, everything can be cut with a nice pair of shears um, or utility knife. It's all uh, quite easy to work with. Now, I have a hundred feet of main line right now that's running around the garden in the sun. It works a little bit better whenever it is uh, is warmed up and hot. It's a little more pliable. Microtubing. This is a hundred feet. This will go a long way. I have another roll uh, out back here. Once you have your plan established, you have your your bill of materials, and you make your order from wherever you find uh, that you want to get your. Uh, irrigation supplies. I use a website called Drip Depot. Um, they have free shipping over 50 bucks and uh, everything has arrived pretty timely and everything has been 
uh, in the order that I, that I ordered. Those are the basics of planning and getting your supplies. So you get your stuff and um, we'll get into the installation here in a second. Um, I just finished planting the garden, so I wanted to take a little time to sit down and talk uh, here in the shade and cool off a little bit. Something else I wanted to talk about are, are the pros and the cons of drip irrigation versus regular hand watering. And the first pro is time. Time and consistency. I know in the past, whenever I was watering the garden, I was listening to music or talking on the telephone and watering and moved to the next plant and not watering every plant equally. And not all that water was going right to the plant. You have the risk of um, your soil splashing onto your foliage that can promote disease. Hand watering is time consuming. If you like hand watering, keep doing it. But if you want to save time, if you want to be able to leave your garden for a vacation, uh, several days, a couple of weeks, you can because of timers and the control that you have over the amount of water. Um, so with another, or another uh, pro from drip irrigation is that prevention of disease. The water goes right to the soil. There's no uh, splashing. Uh, there's no contact of water to foliage unless you have a mister. Some plants like that, mostly uh, hanging style plants, uh, not necessarily your vegetables. So it's a good disease preventative of drip irrigation. When you're using a drip tape right along your row or drip, emitter, drip emitters directly to the plant, you're not watering in between the rows and in places in the garden uh, that don't need water. And in those places that don't need water that you could be watering using a sprinkler or a hand water, you're watering weeds and you're promoting weed growth. So when you water directly where the plants need it, you're preventing weeds also. The amount of labor involved daily in drip irrigation is zero. Once it's installed, you have a timer going, you don't have to uh, think about, did I remember to water? Because it does it on its own. Now this timer has got a delay function. So if it were to rain uh, heavily for a day, I could go out push a couple of buttons and delay it for 24 hours or delay it for 48 hours or however long I want it to delay for and not water again. And it'll start a countdown. It'll not water for one or two days. Um, and the flexibility of the timer, you can set it up to water every other day, six times a day, lots of options on that thing. Another pro is drip irrigation works fantastically for uneven ground. If you have a garden uh, installed on a hillside and you're using uh, sprinklers or hand watering method, the, the volume of water that is added to the top of the soil begins to erode down the hill. So with drip irrigation, because it's a slow delivery, that water goes directly to the plant and has the opportunity to soak in right in the root zone. It's fantastic for uneven ground keeps that water and the nutrient uh, from your fertilization system right at the plant. It's delivering it right to the root zone. On my cons list, I only have two things that I could think of as a con of uh, installing a drip system. Number one, emitters can clog. Mine's been installed, this will be the third season. I've never had an emitter clog that I have known of. Many of the emitters these days are, um, they have a self-cleaning mechanism that they, at the end, they siphon back a little bit. So if there's anything in there to pull it out and you can take them apart to clean them. Uh, this is great. The small buttons, the button emitters, still installed over there. They unscrew the same way, you can clean them. Um, 
it's probably mostly dependent on the on the water uh, at your site. If you're extremely rural and you have a lot of iron and a lot of calcium, like lime deposits in your in your water, you may have some issue. But I think most of that's going to get caught uh, with proper filters. And this is a very basic filter. Um, you may need a more um, thorough filter. This one I think is one or two microns. Um, there's much, much better filters out there if they're needed. And the second con, there is a little bit of upfront cost. My initial install, I think I spent between $150 and $180. And with the upgrade uh, that I'm doing now, three years later, uh, I also ordered extra parts in case I wanted to change it around a little bit. I spent about another $160. It's not a huge investment, but it is more than uh, just a regular hose off the spigot of your house. But, you know, I think you're saving water. My measurement last year for the entire garden, garden watering for 30 minutes, I was using only 51 gallons of water um, using the drip tape. So I'm very interested to see how much that reduces uh, decreasing the amount of emitters I have in the garden. So I was uh, talking about upfront cost and uh, the, uh, the camera cut off. So we had some technical difficulties. Uh, battery died, so I had to wait uh, for it to get enough charge to come back on while powered from an extension cord. Gave me some time to uh, work ahead, I guess. Um, I saved enough of the install uh, operations to show you on the video. I pre-cut a bunch of my micro tube. And um, so I'll finish by saying, um, you know, part of the upfront cost, other than the equipment in there, is the timer, um, fertilizer injector and stuff like that. The timer, um, I think was about $75. I'll put a link uh, down below in the description. It's indispensable. I highly recommend it. Um, it has worked without a fault for three years. Um, the fertilizer injector takes all of the thought out of remembering to fertilize, how much to fertilize. Uh, you just have to remember about every 12 days to fill it with a liquid fertilizer. Super easy. You can use fish emulsion, you can use a water soluble that you mix yourself, put in there. Um, very, very, very simple. So let me stop talking and we'll actually get in the garden and talk about the installation process and just how easy it is. We'll put in, um, they'll put in this four way. I'll show you how it connects to the main line. Uh, all the other connectors, the elbows and the T's and the caps, all uh, lock down the exact same way with this permalock uh, system. And then uh, I'll show you punching holes in the main line, adding the micro tubing, and connecting to the emitters. Super simple. And then we'll, we'll just do kind of an overview walk around of what's going on in the garden. So. I said it once, I'll stop talking, let's get to the installation. So here we are at the back of the bed where the tomatoes and the okra are. And <clears throat> the existing main line comes in here, comes up out of the ground, goes across, and then back down and then distributes to the finger beds. So prior, this line here in the middle had four drip tapes going that way and four drip tapes going that way. So we're going to replace this main line here that just spans across the four feet of the bed so that we can add, and I've stretched it across here, new main line using the T to go left and right. We're going to put a shut off to isolate each side. And then we'll add our micro tubing to the emitters to each tomato and each okra. So the first step is to replace this four foot piece uh, because it has holes punched in it. 
where the drip tape was. I already removed that, took it over to the shed. So we're gonna remove this four foot piece, put in a new piece. Uh, let me go get my section of uh, main line for this and I'll be right back. All right, so here's a piece of main line. This is actually left over from the very first project. We're gonna feed it through the hole over to the other side. <clears throat> and we do our best not to get any, uh, any dirt down inside because that's just gonna cause some problems later on. So we're gonna reconnect back to the elbow here <clears throat> and screw that permalock back down. Push it to the front and then we're gonna hop back across. Safe to step here. Okay, so then this piece goes under and through. Scissors, scissors, I'm using just regular uh, utility scissors. We're going to install the T. So this is fairly straightforward. You make your mark at the back section here uh, where you wanna cut the main line. So I lay it down. Give it an eyeball. I don't know if it's gonna extend back into there very good. We're gonna try it. So I'm gonna cut it right there. Yeah, here. Nice straight cut across. And then, may not block, push it, push it on, and lock it down. So easy. I hope I'm, I'm showing, showing you just how easy this process is, that it's not a, a project that uh, is beyond too many people's skill set. Push them together, screwing down. Okay. So, a small piece will connect through the hole here. This, not everybody's gonna have this situation. I chose to drill holes to move it through. So I'm gonna pull this section back out, feed this through, and connect it on this side. Oh, it's screwed. Gotta unlock it. There we go. And then we lock it down. Okay, there we're going to pull it, pull it through. Oh, I like it a lot. And then we're going to measure it here because the supply elbow is going to connect. And then it's going to lock it all together. So I'm going to, this is pretty close. Get in here with my scissors give it a nice flush cut. <laughs> I wish I would have done this before putting the fence up because the fence is nothing but in the way at this point. There we go. And then lock that piece. Lock that piece down. Alright. It's almost looks exactly like where it was when we started. So we have our main supply, 
goes across, supplies the finger beds. Now we're going to cut this piece of main line right here that I've already ran across the back. Going to mark it at the back of the four way and slip in here. Give it a snip. Oh. Get a good view of my rump. That looks great. And this part is still a continuous loop out there, so we don't have to trim it. We just push it down and connect it. <clears throat> well, junk. <laughs> I forgot to uh, add in the cutoff valve. So, I'm going to come back and do that in a second. I have another one installed down there that'll be easier to shoot, and I'll show you how that goes. So let's go ahead and move on down to the end, and I'll show you how uh, we're upgrading the finger beds. Okay, here we are at one of the finger beds, and this is the existing main line. As you can see, it has the the drip tape on it. I have a, a new emitter stake here. I have a couple of zucchini seeds planted right under it. Here's the new main line that I have pulled along the edge that we're going to install a elbow. Go ahead and connect that. A shut off so we can isolate the emitters and use drip tape. I already have these drip tapes uh, turned off. And then we're going to cut the original main line and connect to the elbow. And we'll get the camera down here close so you can see that happen. All right, so we have the elbow installed. We're gonna add the, the shut off. So we hold it about where it's gonna go. Put our finger there and give it a nice flush cut. Easy. We add shut off. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. You know, if it was like this, that didn't really work for this application. <clears throat> and then we lock it down. And it spins all over the place. All right. So then this will connect to the new main line. Just as easy as so. Screw it to lock it down. And then add it to the, to the bed. So with the existing main line, we want to bring the elbow up. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of, we want it close up against the fence and we're going to cut it right about there. Make a little mark with the tip of the scissors. Let's move this out of the way. We'll reach in with our scissors. <clears throat> Give it a snip. So here's the, the old uh, end and the cap. We're gonna reuse this cap. So we'll take it off, just like that. We're gonna reuse it at the end here. So we're gonna go ahead and put our elbow at the new connection point. There we go. A little bit of muscle. And move my hand so you can see. Just screw lock it down. And there it is. It sets in there very nicely. 
All right, so we'll move down to the end and add the cap. Okay, here we are at the end of the new main line. Um, there's a potato I have an emitter here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use a drip emitter here or a sprayer. But anyway, we're going to add the cap here. So I'm going to butt it right against the fence, make myself a little imaginary mark with the end of my scissors there. I don't guess it's very imaginary if you can see it, but anyway, I'm going to give it a snip. And then we're going to add the cap to the end. See, every connection is the same, no matter if it's a cap, an elbow, a T, a four-way, doesn't matter. It's all the same. And then that tucks right there along the side of the bed. So the next I'll demonstrate how we um, punch a hole in the main line and add some microtubing to an emitter. All right, now we're going to connect this emitter to the main line using a piece of microtubing. So we start, this is our little punch tool. Uh, cost a dollar fifty. We're gonna go eh, basically straight across from it, and we're gonna go to the, on the side of the main line, apply pressure, wiggle it around a little bit. And there we go. We got a hole. We have this tiny barb fitting. Okay. So then this barb fitting, we put on the end of the microtubing. Easy. And then we just push the barb fitting into the main line. And <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good idea if you have extra microtubing. This was a piece of uh, leftover from the last roll. So we're gonna use it. It's okay if it has a little bit of a curl in it. I'm putting it underneath the drip tubing. And then with the emitter, it goes on the red barbed end, you just push it on there. And that's it. Right here, right here, there's a couple of uh, zucchini seeds that it's gonna water. So that's it for connecting a piece of microtubing with a emitter to mainline. So that wraps up installing the upgrades on the drip irrigation system. I'm very hopeful that we're gonna be saving some water this year. I'll do an update in a few weeks to compare how much water we were using last year, about 51 gallons, to how much we're gonna use this year. We're super excited. If you wanna make sure you don't miss those videos, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notifications when we release those videos. If you think this video is gonna be helpful for you or helpful for somebody else, click that like button to let YouTube know we're doing a good job. Thanks for watching and keep on working toward a better Terra, one water and time-saving project at a time. <laughs>